Hey, what's up you guys? We're hanging out here with Memphis Mayfire for the second time. How you doing, Maddie? Doing great, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. And uh, for people who are watching for the first time, could I have you personally introduce yourself and tell us what you do in the band? What's up? I'm Maddie Mullins and I sing for a band called Memphis Mayfire. If you were a porn star, what would be your porn star name? Dang, dude, I've never thought about that. <laughs> um, you haven't? Why not? No. I don't know, man. Give me you try to name me. Um let's see. The Red Behemoth. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe Master Maddie, but that sounds more of like a... Master Maddie. Maybe that's like an MC name. I don't know, dude. The Ma Master Maddie. So they have to uh, take commands. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you have it your way. Like Burger King. Do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what animal do I remind you of? Shoot. Um, maybe like a pelican. A pelican? Yeah. Yeah? Because you're slender and... I don't know, dude. <laughs> Fun, yeah. I don't know. Kind of wobble. Yeah. You kind of remind me of um, <laughs> a, a weasel. A weasel? Yeah. Come on, you can do better than that. A chipmunk. A chipmunk's good. Yeah. That'll be fine. You always laugh and you're full of life. You yeah. got little chubby cheeks. I'm little. Okay, yeah. I get it. Let's just say we got in a fight over the last Dr. Pepper. All right, because I saw you have some Dr. Pepper in there. Sure do, yeah. Actually, can I show this? You actually do have Dr. Pepper in here, right? Ugh. Yeah, we got a whole Dr. Oh, you got all kinds of stuff. And, uh, monster and some uh, chicken noodle soup. So, yeah, you got all kinds of stuff in there. So, we're, we're in a fight for that. <laughs> all right. Who do you think would win? Probably me, dude, because yeah? like, I got some big old bandmates that would rush in here and back me up. That's true. But. Yeah. I'm a ninja. You are a ninja? Yeah. Black belt? I lived in Japan for eight years. No, you did not. Nishiwa, <laughs> bokwa You did. I did. <laughs> I don't know what you just said. <laughs> but I've, we've toured in Japan. It's beautiful over there, man. Yeah, That's cool. Is. How was that? It was It was interesting. I was uh, I was the only blonde kid out of all the Asians. I would imagine. Yeah. You know what? They all dress really nice. But back to the point. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting that Dr. Pepper. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Shoot, son. Well, um... Have you seen Corey, my bass player? Yeah. We always talk about it. Like, if someone ever came at me, I would play the tough guy role and go throw a punch, but then I'd duck down and he'd knock you out. I think his size might be a, a match for your ninja skills. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. How does it feel? Because I know you have an incredible fan base. How does it feel when they get their lyrics tattooed? Has that ever, have you ever seen that? Lots of times, man. It's insane. Honestly, the first, um, the first Memphis tattoo I ever saw was... I think it was like a year after the band had started and uh, the kid came to the show and he had like just our logo all giant there and that was like insane to me. But um, I think the coolest one that I've ever seen was a girl came out to a Warp Tour date and she put a piece of paper down at the merch booth and she was like, hey, will you write Lift Up Your Eyes Discouraged one? And I was like, yeah, for sure, like, you know, whatever. And so I wrote it out and I've got like terrible handwriting, you know? And uh, quickly. Like a, a few weeks later, she came to another warp date and she lifted up her shirt and showed me her ribs. And in my handwriting, she had tattooed oh my, God. my lyrics. And so, not only was it you know my words, but also my handwriting. I, I was blown away by that. It was really cool. I actually saved the picture on my phone. So, so you, you almost wish you would have done it like like in really. Yeah, I wish I would have known, dude, for sure. But no, it's cool. It, it doesn't look too bad. It looks uh, artsy, I guess. It's, it must be amazing to know that you have that effect on so many people. You know, like you're you're an inspiration to people. You know. I've, every day I wake up, man, I'm thankful for, for the opportunity that I have to, to be able to share, you know, my my lyrics with the multitudes, and it's I still, I, I can't grasp it really sometimes. You know, I wake up, and I, I'm, I'm a person, just like anybody else, you know, but for some reason, I was given this opportunity, and, you know, I'm using it. If we were stranded on a boat. Just me and you? Just me and you, because we were going fishing, mm -hmm. and we, <laughs> we only had one life jacket, and the boat was sinking, and there were sharks everywhere, and the sharks were hungry, and we were probably gonna get eaten. And we're out in the middle of nowhere, so no one's gonna save us. And there's literally like no one. Like we're probably going to die. I mean, we're we're literally screwed. Yeah. Like there's there's no hope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which who, would you give me the life jacket, or or would you keep it for yourself? I would, man. I you think would? I would give you the life jacket. I think it's important that going through life. I think that um, some some of us just like waste. Uh, our chances and, and I think that the ones that leave their mark and that are remembered forever are uh, the type of people that would give you the life jacket. I actually got this tattoo the other day and it oh, says uh, serv in on this? It says servant heart and um, in the Bible it talks about how you should always think of others as greater than yourself and so I thought you know that'd be a good spot for a reminder 
I think I'd give you the life jacket. Thank you, man. Yep. Yeah, give it a hug, man. Come on, bring it in, son. That's, that's awesome. Yep. Thank you, dude. Of course. I appreciate that. Yep. On that note, how, how do you want to be remembered? Because obviously you, you're building a reputation and you're leaving music behind. What do you want your legacy to be? Well, man, I have so many flaws just like anybody, you know, but I think that um, I, I'd like to be remembered like, you know, like my dad will be remembered. My dad's an incredible dude and just uh, always cares about everyone else, never thinks about himself. So uh, I'd like to have that, you know, and I, I guess, you know, a lot of kids have written me messages and stuff like that and told me that, uh, you know, my lyrics have saved them from cutting their wrists or, you know, that they, they were able to walk away from an abusive relationship because of me. And I think that I want to maintain that, you know, and, and never, never do anything to, to wrong that image because I'm, I'm really proud of who I've become and happy. So yeah. I want to be remembered as me, Maddie Mullins, you know. What pop song should start playing when you walk into a room? Katy Perry's Last Friday Night. Yeah. Or Firework, Firework by Katy Perry. You know what? I dig that. Firework for sure. Yeah. I like that song too, so that's it. Because baby, you're a firework. <laughs> that's cool. Katy Perry wrote my anthem. Really? So every time yeah. I walk into a room, you're going to hear fireworks. Cause baby, you're a firework. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. That music video is insane, too. <laughs> yeah, there's fireworks coming out of her chest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you're you're, mar you're not married. Are you, you're I've been married for been six, married. six years. Yeah. Okay. So back in the day, though, did you did you use or did you have any good pickup lines? Son, I can't even remember the last girlfriend I had before my wife. We dated all through high school. And Let's then say you were going to pick her up again. Yeah. You're going to go back and you're going to pick her up again. What, what pickup line are you going to use? Whew, hey, baby girl. I haven't had to do that in a while. I don't know. Let me hit it, maybe. I say that to my wife sometimes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, dude. You say that? She's so cool, dude. Yeah. You say, let me hit it to your wife. Oh, girl, let me hit it. Wow. What yeah. does she say? Always down. She's always down. Down with it, dude. That's a cool wife. She's awesome, dude, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I guess maybe if I said that to someone else, I'd get slapped. You just say, let me hit it, and she's down. If that's not love, then... <laughs> no, she's cool, man. But no, I, uh, I'll take you out somewhere tonight, and I'll let you say that to someone and see what happens. Let me hit it? Yeah. A lot of our viewers say they get bullied for being like different or liking this kind of music or dressing the way they do. What advice would you give them? Dude... Uh, trust me, I went through it in high school. Like, um, I've always been an individual. I've never really cared about what most people care about, and I just did my own thing. And in high school, I guess I was kind of like an emo kid or whatever, you know. But I think that it takes, I think you have to hit a certain age before you realize that individuality is a good thing, you know, and that being yourself is a great thing. I think going through high school and, you know, middle school or whatever and just trying to feel accepted, it's so hard to wake up in the morning and be like, you know, I want to wear that or I want to do this or I want to say this, but I probably shouldn't because then I'll get picked on. But I encourage you to be yourself 100% because when you look back on it, you will not regret it. You know, like I, I look back on some of the worst years of my life going through, uh, you know, just bullying and getting picked on it all the time. And, uh, you know, now I'll, I'll run into some of those kids when we play our hometown and, you know, we've got a sold out show at the biggest club in Spokane, Washington, and that kid's working at Subway. So, um, yeah. you know, be yourself and it'll pay off. You know, like the whole uh, emo swoop, but then you had like the spikiness in the back, you know? Yeah. So I looked like the emo Statue of Liberty some days, you know, with the thing, and my hair was red, so obviously it, you know, and thick and coarse and kind of poofy. So uh, I got it. I got it pretty bad. I got bird hair a lot, is what kids would call me. <laughs> bird hair? Yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. I got made fun of for curly hair. Did you get made fun of for red hair? Oh, for sure. To this day, I do. My whole band picks on me all the time. It's, uh, it's funny, geez. though. Roses are red, violets are blue. Brian Stars, I love you. Aww, can I get another hug? Yeah, this is like a big in. love, big love. We're gonna do at least five of these. Yeah, that's the goal. What's the most disturbing thing a fan has ever asked you? I think I might have said this in the last interview. Some kid asked me to sign his tooth, and I did. You didn't say that. Someone asked you to sign their tooth. On the real, he he was like, "Yo, will you sign my tooth?" And I was like, kind of caught off guard. And like my tour manager was like, hand. "No, son, in his mouth." And he like lifted his lip up. <laughs> And it, I think it ruined the Sharpie because I went and I got like halfway through the signature before it was too wet to work anymore. And uh, yeah, but that was the first time I ever signed a tooth. I hate the boob question. Stop asking me to sign your boobs on the real. I don't do it. I never will. So knock it off. It happens a lot. Dude. And these girls know I'm married and stuff too. It's disgusting. Jezebel. There's a song about it. Check it out. Tyra Banks from America's Next Top Model believes everyone should have a signature pose. What is your signature pose? <laughs> 
dang, dude. I don't know. I do this in pretty much every picture. The whole peace sign thing. I picked that up when I was real young. Haven't stopped doing it ever since. Let's pretend I'm an excited fan and we're taking our picture. Are you ready? All right, okay. here we go. All right. <laughs> Kids have seen that so many times. Yeah. Right? I get really excited when I meet fans. So. In June 2007, a couple in South Carolina fell off the roof of a building while they were having sex and really? died. Really? Yeah. That That's real? Yeah. Dang. Rumor has it, dude. Oh, that's so good that they're not alive to, you know, get the flack, though. <laughs> I think that might even be worse, dude. How would you explain that if you were, like, their brother? I would try my hardest to explain that I was not their brother. <laughs> I would play it off like, nah, I didn't know them at all. You Sorry. didn't know them at all. <laughs> yeah. What if, like, how would you tell, like, Grandma, though? Why? Like, yeah, so I, Dad's like, dude, I can't. You, it falls on you. I would hope Grandma wouldn't find out what really happened. We'd probably try to make up a story about how they were cooking up a nice Thanksgiving dinner in the kitchen and something exploded. <laughs> something, something exploded. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be a bummer, though, for sure. I can't believe that's real. That sucks, dude. I think it's it's like it's an internet thing. Mm. Hopefully it's not. Yeah. But at least they died happy. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess. If you were in a Disney movie, what character would you be? Is Toy Story a Disney movie? Yeah, it is. I, I'd probably be Woody, dude, because I, like, I think cowboys are real cool. Yeah. And I think he did a, a real good job, uh, you know, being a good dude. I think yeah, I'd He took be, care of everybody. He really did, you know? He really did. And he had some good boots and, and all that. Dude, I could be Buzz. You could. Then we could be best friends. And doesn't he wear blue, too? He does. He does. So. Yeah, and he, like, he's kind of, like... I don't know. He he wears like a the same thing all the time. He's yep. and, and like he doesn't really know what's going on. Mm. He thinks he's a superhero. Son, I gotta ask you this. How many of these do you have? One. I just wash it a lot. Dang. Yeah. You gotta get online and order a few more. What happens when it runs out? Oh, it's lucky. That's yeah. like your identity. I know, right? <laughs> I gotta get another one before they run out. For sure. For sure. No, but if I'm Buzz and you're Woody, then it's up to us to take care of all the toys. I think we could do it. I think we could. I think we could. Together, we could. we'd make a great team. Memphis Mayfire. I don't think I've ever actually asked this. Um, what do you What do you stand for? What's the message of the band? And why do you think you guys have made it to where you have? Well, um, I don't know, man. It's it's like when I joined the band, I've always had like a, a really specific vision for what you know, like I've wanted my lyrics to be about and things like that. And um, Musically, uh, Kellen, our guitarist, who does all the instrumental writing and stuff, always has a vision for what he wants the music to be like. So together, we really make a great team because um, I have a lot of respect for his writing, and it's almost like sometimes when he gives me a song, I can already hear a melody in it. It's beautiful, dude. Um, but as far as the message goes, I just I want to change and inspire lives. As cliche as that sounds, dude. Like I've always, you know, there's bands that did that for me when I was younger, and looking up to those people, wanting to be those people and, you know, do what they did, you know, um, has been a big inspiration to me. So, I don't know, it, it means more to me than I think people know when, when someone comes up to me and tells me a success story that, you know, that was brought on by our music. When I first joined the band, I think that, you know, more than anything, we were just trying to figure out how to rebuild what had been broken, because when I joined, I wasn't the original singer, you know, and um, so I think that it's important that people know that when we go in to write a record, we're never gonna think about like, okay, well this band sold this many records, so we have to you know, sound like that if we wanna get to this level or whatever. Like we go in and we write, and we do what we want, and I say what I want and what I think needs to be said, and if it's perceived well, then awesome, and if it's not, then at least I did what I wanted to do. And so I think that um, you know, it's always been an understanding between Kellen and I and the rest of the band that we're just gonna be ourselves, and I think that it's, it's been good for us. Biggest challenge as a band, and have you overcome it? Yeah, we've definitely been through a lot, and we overcame it all. Um, just a story that comes to mind. There, there's a song, we did an EP called Between the Lies, and there's a song called Deuces Lost Crucis on it, and um, that song is about overcoming, um, you know, hardships and, and trials, and um, there was one time when we, we used to tour in a van, and we had so many problems, more than anybody, man, I swear, and... Uh, we were driving through Las Cruces and our transmission went out and we were all noobs and like we didn't know like how much a transmission cost or what it did or anything like that. So we go into this place and they're like, yeah, it's going to be um, $3,000 and it's going to take, you know, about a week to fix. And so we were like, all right. So we went to this other place called... Like, all right. Yeah, we, we were <laughs> bummed for sure. And we went into this other place um, 
called Affordable Transmission was the name of it, dude. And we were like, can you do this today? And how much? They're like, yeah, 1500 bucks, and we'll get it out to you by tomorrow. And a week later, we were still living in a hotel parking lot. Not a hotel, hotel parking lot. We had to go into um, Cracker Barrel daily and beg their manager to feed us because we had no money. And we were literally stranded in Las Cruces, dude. So they which, didn't fix it? Um, no, it took them a week before they were, um, they had messed it up so bad that we ended up getting our money back and we went to the other place that was 3000 and it took another, you know, few days for them to get it done. And so we missed a bunch of shows. It was when we were on tour with the Chariot. So you had no money, no transmission, stranded, begging, begging for food. Begging for food, yeah. At Cracker it's Barrel. funny because Cracker Barrel helped us out and fed us, but McDonald's wouldn't. <laughs> Believe it or not, we we do we tried everything in the area, you know. We would I think a couple of our members went and stood in front of a gas station and like begged for money too, you know. So I mean, that's that's one thing that people don't understand, you know. Like oh, you start a band, you get all famous, and everything's cool, and you have a lot of money. But like, dude, for the first few years, it's hard. It doesn't matter who you are, you know. And so uh, we made it through. We're thankful to be here and uh, living in our beautiful home. What do you want to say to that Cracker Barrel now? Dude, thank you so much. On the real, if we ever go back through Las Cruces, we're going to go in there and give them all the money for the food they gave us, for sure. What makes you angry? Liars. What do you mean? Why? When people lie to me. I think that really makes me angry. I try to be as honest as possible at all times, you know, and I have my flaws, you know, but if somebody tells me something and I trust them because I really do trust people and I like to believe that, you know, that still exists and then I find out it's untrue, I get angry. What do you do when you're angry? Well, son, I try not to get too physical with anybody. I never really do get in fights or anything like that. But I don't know, man. I think when I was growing up, like, my mom would never, like, beat me or anything. I think the thing that that made me most upset was when she would just, you know, she would seem disappointed in me, you know? And I think that that's, like, something that's really important for people to learn. Like, if somebody lies to me or does something wrong to me or whatever, I'll let them know, like, you know, I'm really disappointed in you. I thought you were better than that. And I think that really makes people think. Do you think you'll be a good parent? I don't know if I'm going to be a parent. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's been something I've thought about for a long time. My wife and I are both on the same page where it's like, maybe, but maybe not. We don't, at this point in our lives, we don't see ourselves like needing children. Um, I've actually never talked about this in an interview, so. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, if it happens, like, yeah, I'll be a great dad, you know? Absolutely. But... If it doesn't, I think that maybe I'm one of those people, one of the you know small percentage of people that wasn't supposed to have kids because I'm supposed to be out here doing other things. And I think that um, you know me being here and not being home all the time, I'm doing things that that matter, and um, I'm making a change as much as I can. And I think that if I did have a kid and I was gone all the time, it would be really hard on them. You know. Uh, Kellen Quinn does an amazing job at being a father and being a touring musician. Uh, spends ridiculous amounts of money out of his own pocket to fly home almost every day they have a day off to see his baby. And I think that's incredible, dude. So wow. he's awesome. That's insane. Yeah. I didn't. He does. He flies home. He flies home for, for literally a few hours and then flies back. Such a good dude. What's it like to have him? I, you guys are like best friends, right? Best buds. What's it like to have Kellen Quinn as a best friend? I'm sure most... Of the people watching would love to have Kellen Quinn as best friend. Yeah, I don't know, man. I guess I don't see him as Kellen Quinn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what's it? Yeah, what's it like to have Kellen as a best friend? Well, he, you know, he is a rock star, and I don't want to discredit him by any means. You know, the dude's talented beyond belief. But um, the thing that that draws me and Kellen together is that we have really similar home situations. We, you know, we have, we're really similar people. Um, you know, we're both out here for the same reasons with no bad intentions. We don't go out and party and like mess around with girls every night at all. Like that's not us, you know, um, we're just here to make a difference and to write music and to, to love on kids. And, uh, our, you know, number one priority is our people back home that need us. And so having somebody that's level headed, um, in my life as a touring musician is really important. And so, you know, we talk on the phone like almost every day and catch up and everything. He called me earlier today and, uh, told me about a song idea he's working on or whatever and he's saying it to me it sounds awesome dude so yeah i love Kellen to death man and i think we're gonna be best friends forever what tattoo means the most to you that you have my first tattoo ever when i was 18 i got this the day i turned 18 i was so I was so ready i was like yeah um it's a hand and it's holding three playing cards and the cards say the father the son and the holy spirit and in banners it says play your cards right oh wow and uh i think that 
it's my oldest tattoo. Maybe that's why it's my most meaningful, but um, I'm definitely still stoked on that one for sure. Why do you, why are tattoos, obviously you get, you've gotten a lot of them. Yeah, um, I, dude, I use tattoos as reminders uh, wow. to myself. Um, it says only love only and it, love. it's only half of a statement. Uh, down here, I'm gonna do will save. It's gonna say only love will save. And um, I talked about it in an interview yesterday actually, but um, the meaning behind that is that um, I think that I, I am a believer in God, absolutely, but I think that Christians are the number one cause of atheism. I think that people being so radical and in your face and telling you you're going to go to hell before they've even invested in your lives will turn them off to, to the Word of God, you know? And so um, only love will save means that I, I think that if everybody loved each other the way that Jesus did, uh, a lot more people would really understand the love of Christ. Um, Servant Hari told you about that one. Uh, this says the end is near, and this is kind of the story of Revelation with the um, with the beast and the woman with the dress in the sun with the moon below her feet and you know I don't, we don't have enough time to explain it but uh, <laughs> this over here is um, it's a seraphim angel and it's worshiping God this is the throne of God but it's not done yet so, and um, a lot of religion on your arms yeah, yeah absolutely I think that if I'm gonna get a tattoo and I'm gonna have it for the rest of my life it better be something that's gonna be a part of my life for the rest of my life um, but seraphim their angels in heaven and their sole duty is to worship god that's all they do so um that and i've got memphis mayfire crest on the back of my leg actually and then on my feet i've got mom and dad what do you think you'll be like when you're 80. old <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll probably be slow and burnt out dude i don't know yeah you think you'll be doing this for 10 15 more years longer yeah i mean I'm going to go until I can't go anymore. My grandpa's had this one chair for so long that he sits in. And um, it's in the living room. And he puts on headphones to watch the TV because he can't hear the TV from wherever the TV's at or whatever. I'll probably be that guy. You know, I'll probably just be chilling and, and watching TV and hanging out. My wife will be in this chair over here. And um, I don't know, dude. By the time I'm 80, I think I'm going to have done enough to, to just sit back and, and sure. enjoy life for a minute. Yeah. Can you compliment me in a... Uh in a masculine voice, since I guess we both kind of have high-pitched voices, so. Dang. Um, Compliment my appearance, or my look. Yeah. <laughs> dang, Brian. <laughs> I don't know, I can't get that. Dang, Brian. Uh, that blue sweater sure looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. I like your asking Alexandria to a pass. <laughs> Yours is so bad. I like the way your pants hug your legs. You sound like a professional wrestler, dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> I like your glasses. Oh, Appreciate wow. it. Sing a compliment to me. Compliment my um, belt. Brian. Yes? I sure love your belt. Thank you, <laughs> Maddie. You're welcome. I like your tattoos. That sounds like a like a jingle. <laughs> da, da 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 da. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Describe your manhood with one of your mini song titles. <sighs> Dang, son, I'm trying to go through it. I forgot all the names of my own songs. Um, we'll have to edit this part. <laughs> We're gonna get a good one. You will. I hey, call me son. <laughs> Hang on, son. We're gonna find a good one. The center, probably. The center. Yeah. For your man. Uh, wow. I'll, I'm I'm a, I'm a person just like anybody else. I make mistakes. The center. I'm a center. What about for me? Maybe. Jezebel. <laughs> <laughs> Jezebel? I think you're a skanky girl at heart, son. My favorite thing about Brian's body is... That curly mop. That curly mop. That curly mop. Yeah, dude, ladies dig it. It's a dang good one. so much action with this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So much action. Sometimes when I fart, I... Say I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my bad. My bad. So it's that bad, huh? <laughs> Deadly. Fool me once. It's rare. It really is rare. That's good. Go ahead. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. I'll have my big old bass player kill you. Oh. Yep. I would never do this. Shoot someone. Not a gun? 
Well, maybe if they hurt a dog or a girl, maybe I would shoot them. Um, so I'll take that back. I would never disrespect my fans. That's a good answer. I've seen some uh, certain people lately that are real disrespectful towards the people that put them where they are, and I think that's BS. I would never disrespect any of you guys. I love you. The carpet matches the drapes? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's all red, son. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't asking, but there you go. <laughs>
There we go. All right, you now own those spoons. The spoons are mine. I've got this. It's a um, Paul's Honey Lemon uh, Triple Soothing Action. It soothes triple sore throat, soothing relieves action. coughs, and uh, cools nasal passages apparently. But they're amazing, dude. And I always have a few of them in my pocket at all times. Wow, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Wow. Because we travel so much, like going from state to state, where it's like in one state it might be humid, and then in the next state it's really dry, mm -hmm. and so it makes it hard to sing. So I always have those in there, and before shows, I'm on them like all day. So this is like a typical day for you guys. This is what we do. Okay. So we've got um, the green rooms to the merge area, and this is when we play, and this is when everyone else plays, or right here is when we play. It's made fire. Yep. 45 minutes set. You think you've got the uh, stamina for that? Whew. We're gonna find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll be good. That's I, the. Uh, it's the same time we played in Europe. So. Yeah, I, I could probably go like three, four, five minutes. So 45 minutes. That's a long set. All right, it's show time. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Good morning, bud. All right, come back, you can see what you got. Let's see what you got, Maddie. Got this abandoned alley back here. <laughs> okay.
Don't worry, there's plenty more where that came from. Come with me behind the scenes, backstage, and onto the tour bus to meet your favorite stars. Hey, what's up you guys? We're hanging out here with Asking Alexandria, the very tired all-time low. We're hanging out here with Black Veil Brides. I'll ask questions you've never heard before and get you the answers you won't find anywhere else. You said you're a Justin Timberlake fan. No. No? no. Maybe that wasn't you? Oh my god, I shouldn't have smoked all that weed. How long is this nose you have here? I have no idea. Happy so birthday, dear Bri. Ha, 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 ha. I am a ninja. You need to know. Oh. If you were a porn star, what would your name be? Mine would definitely just be the Jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> Our new song, you know, right? Uh, party like it's. Oh, God. Oh, God. Like my balls, yeah. You guys see my balls. You know, and they're like, wee. <gasps> All right. <laughs> I'm crying. He's crying. Thumbs up, comment, and subscribe for brand new videos every day. Reporting for YouTube, I'm Brian Stars. Brian Stars! Brian Stars! I'm the reason you're you go on tour. You're the reason I'm here, baby.